guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles. And today, we're going to be, oh, you can't see it. Today, we're going to be setting up my bioactive Kenyan sand boa enclosure. So, I had a hard time figuring out how to film this because this tank is down on the ground. Um, but I think I got it. So, hopefully I don't bump the camera. But, this is Tootsie's new enclosure, my Kenyan sand boa. It's a 24 by 18 by 12, I think. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's 18 deep, but 24, 18, 12. Um, so this will work for her for her whole life. She's still pretty small right now, but she's a female, so she has the potential to get pretty big for her species. So should she reach the size that she can, this will work for her for life. So I went ahead and upgraded her. This is a custom background that I did. I do have a video for that. You guys can go watch that to see how I made that background. But today we're going to be setting up the bioactive part of it. So starting with our substrate. Okay, so we're going to be setting this up the same way I set up my hog nose enclosure. Pretty much identical. So I've got my bag of Terra Sahara. This is a BioDude bioactive substrate. It's made so that it does not need a drainage layer. So that makes it good for burrowing species like sand boas. Normally I would just use my own bioactive mix, but I've been wanting to try out his and it was on sale and aired species are a little more difficult to do a bioactive for. I did it for my leopard gecko, but I wish that I had just had some pre-made soil to make my life easier. Sometimes it's just easier to have someone else do all the work and just pay for it. Okay, so for her plants, I have some succulents, which are really good for arid species. So I have two succulents there, and I've got some air plants, which again are very good for arid species. So I don't have a whole lot, because you never really see her anyway. And I'm not going to pot these plants, I'm actually going to plant them, but that could change, um, because she is a fossorial species, meaning she digs a lot. So should she dig and destroy the plants because she's digging under them, um, I might take them out and pot them and put them in here in pots so that she cannot ruin them. Oh, you guys can't really see. There we go. Now we add our cleanup crew. So I've got my springtails that I bought from Josh's Frogs. I just feed them and um, breed them in this container. So, sprinkle some of those in. Mix that up. And then our isopods. So I use orange isopods. Orange isopods are very good for um, arid setups. As long as they're not like super, super dry, something like this, oranges will work pretty well for. That should be more than enough. And then our leaf litter. So I use these smaller leaves that I got from Glass Box Tropicals. You can always go out and collect leaves, but I like the looks of the smaller leaves. And I like getting them from reptile distributors because I know that they are, in fact, reptile safe. Okay, and this is our sand boa bioactive for the time being. I do want to get more plants, more cork bark sticks, etc. 
but I wanted to go ahead and get started so the plants could root and the cleanup crew could get established. So just like every project I ever do on here, it's going to be filmed over time. And this is just the first day. Okay, so Leah's date for Tootsie. Um, wow, on the camera it actually looks white. So I put these lights up here just to give it some lighting so I can see what I'm doing and so she can have some light until I get something different. Um, they said soft white and these look more red in person. So like, this looks very red. On camera, it actually looks well lit up. But anyway, the changes. I threw this fake air plant in. I don't know how plants are gonna do with her because she's a fossorial species, so she digs and buries and tunnels. So it looked real, so I just threw it in. Um, I put this piece of driftwood in to prop up that air plant on. And I think that's the only thing that has changed. So once I get more cork bark in the mail today, we will be able to finish it. Okay, so today we're gonna be finishing Tootsie's enclosure and putting her in. So I've got these cork bark flats from uh, Glass Box Tropicals. They're just mini pieces of cork. It's a one gallon bag. I already used some for my hognose bioactive. So we're going to use the rest for Tootsie's bioactive. So just a reminder, this is what we've got going on so far. Her thermostat and heat mat are set up. So those are running right now. And we're going to stick these in. I have to remember to leave room for the water dish. I do need to get a new water dish to match everything. So for now, she's just going to keep the one she's got. So we'll probably put it right up in the front, probably like over here on the side. So we'll have to remember to leave that side open. And then we're just going to fill the spaces. So you'll notice she doesn't really have any hides. Um, she doesn't use her hides. Not saying don't give them hides. Um, yours might. Tessie just doesn't. Um, and these cork bark pieces double as hides. So she could easily hide under here, under there, under any of these. Um, and quite frankly, that's as natural of a hide as you can get. Actually, I actually want to save these small pieces for my isopods. So here's all of our cork bark pieces. Maybe I'll stack these a little bit. we've got. I think I'll put in some more leaf litter. Alright, so there's our water dish. Final product. And now we're going to put in Tootsie. So here's the bin that Tootsie was temporarily in. There she is. Alright, so this is Tootsie, my Kenyan sand boa. For those of you that haven't seen her in a while, she's getting very, very big. And for those of you that haven't met her before, this is her. I'm very excited to be able to give her her new home, so let's see what she thinks. Alright, Tootsie. She's going to go bury immediately. Yep, there she goes. She's not even going to explore. 